So, Travis Flant. Hey! <laughs> Thank you all for, for coming to my session right after lunch. Before we get started, whose first WordCamp is this? Oh, look at all that. Who, is, who has learned at least one thing at WordCamp? <laughs> all right, at least one. That was most hands. Great. Uh, <laughs> So, um, again, also thank you all for coming to WordCamp because, in my opinion, it's the best $40 conference you can find in Kansas City. It's probably the only $40 conference as well. <laughs> so, um, the fact that you're getting value out of it is even better, right? So, I am uh, Travis Flans. Again, my session, everything your WordPress business website is missing. So, things you should do before you blog. Now, it's a little misleading. I'm not going to tell you everything your website is missing. You probably already went to some security sessions. You probably already went and learned about backing up your website. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk front-facing, customer-facing uh, mostly here. Um, you can tweet at me or connect with me on any of the social media platforms. Travis Flans is my name. So, who am I? I always like answering this question. Uh, I am an SEO and content strategist, mainly focused on the content area of the SEO, the big, scary SEO, um, but yes, technical SEO as well. Um, it's just not as fun for me. Uh, my company is WebWorks at Kansas City, it's a small agency, me, I work with a handful of contractors locally. Um, I've been the co-organizer of the WordPress KC Meetup Group. Who's in the Meetup Group? Not as many, okay. Uh, check, check us out there, wordpresskc.com, you can join the Meetup Group. We meet every month, at least once a month. And I've been on the WordCamp Kansas City organizing team since 2014. Uh, hopefully this is the best one yet, I don't know. Who's been to multiple? Good. Who thinks this is the best one? Oh, you had less hands. All right. Somebody had a better time some other time. That's good. Um, and uh, if you couldn't tell from my first two slides, I love dogs. Uh, in, in my spare time, I am an organizer of the Kansas City Dog Club. Yes, that is a real thing. It's a social club for dog lovers. We do everything from walks and hikes and charity events. Um, I also volunteer at Wayside Waves tra training new employees, or not new employees, sorry, uh, new volunteers. And I'm on the advisory council of Spay and Neuter KC. So you're going to see a lot of dogs and dog theme in my presentation today. Uh, last, I like to say that I'm nobody, really. Um, there are lots of very intelligent people here in this room today. And in fact, before we get really going, I kind of require participation throughout my presentations. Um, otherwise, it's going to be very short and very boring. Uh, there's only 13 slides, I believe. So when I ask for participation, please help us all out so we all have a good time. Um, and also, that also ties back to one of the best lessons I ever learned in my entire life. I had a AP history teacher in high school. His name is Mike Luce. He was a, a Vietnam vet. He was also a theater fanatic. He was also a tennis coach. But one of the things that he really taught me was that don't believe what he is telling us as students because he is the one in the front of the room telling it to us. Believe it because you've done your own research, because you've also looked at other reputable sources, and you have come to your own intelligent co conclusion. There are many ways to do what I'm going to tell you today, and what everybody else here at WordCamp has been talking about all weekend as well. So that's just like a little PSA I like to throw out at the very beginning. Um, I also like to tell you what we're not going to talk about, so that way you can get up and leave and go somewhere else if that fits your needs. We're not really going to talk about social media today. We're not going to talk about video, podcasting, photography, and if you're hoping I can tell you that you're never going to have to write anything on your website again, that's also something I'm not going to tell you either. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people think that, that that's a thing now, that they can just stop writing content for their website. Very shocking. Um, so one thing, I already asked you if you learned one thing at WordCamp. I hope you get one thing out of this presentation. I judge success if one person comes to me and tells me they learned one thing. So, sorry to the 50 of you who may not. 
Um, <laughs> and um, lastly, I hope try to take away one thing from here that you can actually use right away. All right, so we've gotten past all the boring stuff, I think. So before you even think about blogging. Uh, so I'm going to talk about some of the things that I see potential customers or potential clients to my company that have wrong on their website all the time. Um, you know, who, who in here is in the industry? Marketing, web design, whatever it may be along those lines. How many, how many times have you had you know, clients come to you and say, I need you to do this and this is the thing that is going to finally set my business over the edge? Yeah, happens all the time. They think there's only one thing that you can help them with and that's all they need from you, right? That's not true. So <clears throat> let's have a little bit of a group discussion here. I'm going to call out Jeff because he said not to use his website as an example. So what? <laughs> <laughs> no, just in general though. So what is one thing that you think your website is missing currently? I mean, you know, right? You said don't use it as an example. More recent portfolio samples. Okay. And I would say more original content. I need to And I've been aware of this for years. I need to talk more. Oh, okay. All right. Or I mean at all. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> or somebody else. Tell, tell us your industry and what you think is that you're missing on your website or your business. It's going to be really boring and really short. Marketing testimonials. Testimonials? Okay. Is it because you don't have enough clients or because you haven't been able to get them to give it to you? We haven't really implemented them. We even have some. We just, they've fallen off in the redesign processes and brought that. Okay. All right. Very direct call to action. Ah, there you go. Now we're getting, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Somebody else? Oh, I was just going to say updated content because we have two employees that are not on our team page and we're a four-man shop. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's big for that individual, too. When somebody is looking and saying, who is this person? You're just like, they don't exist. <laughs> right? We got some others? Content. Just content in general. Okay, good. Um, so here are some of the things that I see that are just blatantly always missing. Um, business location data. Um, you know, we're talking phone number, address. That's very shocking to me how often that is missing. Uh, who went to, I'm a, sorry, Tomstown. Who went to Tomstown last night? So if you visited TomTown's website, they didn't have their address except for on their contact page. So I actually heard that from multiple people yesterday. Where is this? I can't find it. I'm on their website. Well, put it in your footer of every, of every single page. Uh, you know, obviously we're WordPress, so put it in the footer. Um, phone number. So many times I don't see a phone number in the, in the header or, except for on the contact page. Make sure that phone number is in the header and it's clickable on a mobile device. What if we are not local? I mean, like, what if we don't, like, have somebody come? Yeah. Oh, so that's a good question. What, what are you, so give me an industry specific. We'll talk, we'll talk about it, but give me an industry specific. I do website design, but not, but for my own home. So sure. I my home address. Okay. I saw another hand that was kind of. Artist selling prints or. There you go. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that you don't want your address out there. That's something that I I always recommend cons consider that, um, because the address if you are selling services locally, even if like for example. If you really wanted to come to my apartment, you kind of could just show up, but I work from home as well. And so my address, I just use a suite number instead of apartment number, and I've never had anybody show up. I say by appointment only, I've never had anybody show up. Carissa said she's had somebody show up once um, <laughs> at her house. I got a website out of it too. See, there you go. Um, wow. So I guess my thought there is if you're not comfortable with it, figure out a way to be comfortable with it. Um, because if somebody is looking for somebody locally in your industry, they're gonna want somebody locally and unless you're telling them and telling the search engines by having that address there that you are local, they're just gonna assume that you may not have as much credibility as the next person. I 
so, so to satisfy the uh, search engines, would it be good just to put like the city that you live in? Mm. You're, you're not going to get nearly as much value out of that because if somebody is, for example, I live near, I live in Redbridge, the Redbridge area. I'm figuring out where the orientation is here. So it's down this way. So close to Martin City, Leewood. Um, but by the exact address and that being tied to my Google My Business page, right? It's got that address. That address is consistent across everywhere. So I'm going to get a little more in depth with that. But so anybody who is down the road from me, a few blocks away, if they're looking for the services I offer, I'm more likely to show up if my address is attached to my specific business. Post office boxes are not acceptable. Post office boxes are not acceptable. They're not? No. Google knows that it's a post office and that is not a business. What about, what about UPS? Huh? What about UPS stores? U UPS stores, neither. Co-working spaces can work, but... Um, I had my Google business page taken down because they found out it was in a co-working space. My guess is that was probably a competitor. And you, if you that, that's my guess. Yeah, it was Google, and I called. They sent me an email and said that oh? we need pictures of your signage on your building. Okay. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I have that problem too. Well, yeah, they they'll often send you a card. I, but I've I have seen. the same issue as Sarah, but I work at <laughs> coffee shops, so I actually list the five shops I'm at the most often. <laughs> <laughs> I have all yeah. these different addresses in Kansas City on my page. I don't know how much it helps my SEO, but that's what I do. Because I also use a PO box, but I can't really list that. So. That's interesting. So why why do UPS stores not work? Because Google, it's a street number. Google knows that those types of businesses are not business addresses. They know that you're not sitting at a desk in an office there. They know it's not an office. They know it's not an actual business location. Tyler, do you? Do you? No, I agree. You're right. Yeah. Okay. T Tyler's like the big SEO guy in the room, right? Is there anybody else bigger? No. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> I've seen the thing you were talking about, though, where a business that I know is clearly still in business had their hours all wiped off. They were said to be like permanently closed. Yeah. There's no way they would have put themselves out. <laughs> no, competitors can do that. I see it all the time. I had something similar happen to me, and all I did was go in and I said, yes, this is me, and re-verified it, and it was right back up. Um, so I would say try it if it's a co-working space. Take a picture of your door if they need it. That's what I had to do. I had to change it to my office number, which is there you inside go. the building, which doesn't get anybody near me. The, sorry, just a quick question. So you're saying that my competitors can do things, yada, yada, yada. Um, is there any sort of uh, <coughs> monitoring can be done on those to make sure, like, like a, you know, someone check your credit score. You know, your business <laughs> information change in all these places. Uh, Excuse me. Sir. Uh, yes, actually. So a service that I recommend, so I'm not going to go, we'll, we'll, we'll stop with this right there. But a service that I recommend and I use is Moz Local. Um, and it's 100 bucks a year, I think, now. And it can help sync your business listing data across all the all the uh, directories and all of that stuff. So there's, there's a handful of major ones that all the small ones pull that data from to sync. So um, I highly recommend that service. And really, if you just hook up Google My Business and make sure that's all accurate and or Facebook, I say both, and then it will it'll just push the data out and it will keep it updated based on your dashboard in Moz Local. Um, MOZ, local. MOZ and the word local, just as it sounds. Uh, so the about page. Uh, oh wait, well, I skipped ahead, didn't I? Purpose. Purpose is something that uh, shockingly is very, very commonly missing on a website. Um, how many times have you been to a website and you're like, what do they even do? You see that all the time because like their business name is generic business name generic we do generic random services um, you see that a lot in the IT business I've got IT clients that they're it's like uh, let's see what, what, what what's you've seen them what are some generic IT business names my IT not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's at least that's at least branded but you know something like um, 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, something solutions. We manage your business solutions, right? What does that even mean? Dark horse. Huh? Dark horse. Well, at least that's a brand. At least that's a brand. What I'm saying is, you know, just the generic name that doesn't tell you what even they do. And then the whole website talks about random services, not specific services. Um, I wish I would. I did not prepare a better example. I apologize for that. That's on me, 100%. Um, but just make sure that if somebody looks at your page, no matter what page it is on your website, they know what that page is about. They know what you do as a business. Um, yeah, the integrated services, what does that even mean? There may be integrated services in animal husbandry, I don't know, and you're not telling me, right? Um, an in-depth about page, Who's, who mentioned that they got their team page that only has two of the four people, right? Um, so this is, this is something that's very big to me. How many of you are small businesses? Small businesses, consider yourself a small business, a local small business. People buy from people, and if you tell people that you're a local business, a small business, they want to know about you and your business and your philosophy and your history, um, even your potentially your hobbies, like if you run a dog club or something like that. Um, you don't have to only talk about your business on your about page. If you are the principal owner and the main person they're going to be doing business with, Put a little bit of yourself in there. Uh, I said I wasn't going to pick on Jeff, but I'm going to pick on Jeff a little bit back there. <coughs> Jeff only lists his name one time on his entire website, and that's a little signature at the bottom of the About page. I don't on my business page. I, it's all about me and the things <laughs> I've done and the things I want to do and the things where I came from and why I think the way I think. Um, it's about building that trust. And if you show a little bit of vulnerability or a little bit of behind the scenes, I said we're not gonna talk social media, but right? Social media, people always talk about being honest and being real. The about page is really the only place that you have to do that on your actual business website. But if you're learning that that's what you're supposed to do on social media, at least do a little bit on your website as well. And that about page, who looks, who knows, who looks at the uh, analytic data for their website regularly in their about page? So how often is your about page visited on your website? Not very often. Not very often on yours? No. Yeah. 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 So and same thing on same thing on my website. I've got a lot of articles that are really popular as well. But about 10% of the visits hit my about page and that's because if they're thinking about working with me locally they want to know about me so keep that in mind you go as in depth as you want but don't just talk about your business and what your business does on that you have your entire thousands of other pages on your website to do that <clears throat> So direction and purpose are similar, but how many times have you been on a website and you just say, what do I do next? You have to tell the visitor what you want them to do. If it's read the article, if it's share the article, if it's get in contact with us, which if you're selling a service, I guess I didn't ask, how many people, how many people sell services? How many people sell products? Okay, so how many people sell nothing? How many people are just bloggers? How many people are just raising their hand because they want to be the last one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got a couple of those too, right? Um, so, so make sure you give make sure you give those visitors a direction. Um, whether it's it could be calls to action, super important. Um, I kind of added those together, um, even though they can be diff they can be different. Uh, so I kind of view a call to action as telling them exactly what to do and why to do it, whereas direction may be pushing them down the funnel of using your website and taking in that content. Um, so who uses calls to action on their website? Who feels their calls to action are strong? Couple. <laughs> Who doesn't use calls to action, but knows they should? There was one, at least one person said that, okay. Um, those of you who use calls to action that are good, you want to give us an example of what you do and why you do it? 
well, I have a question about this as well. Uh oh. So I launched a podcast for one of my businesses, so I have an episode on the front page, and of course, call action, listen to our most recent episode. Um, or it may say go to the podcast website, whatever. It's about listening to the podcast. Mm-hmm. You can listen to it right there. But I also have like media videos where I've been on the news and stuff, and I have a CR brochure. I, like I have several, mm-hmm. of course, on my homepage. Is that a negative thing? I, too many or what would be too many? I would say it all depends on your website and setup and. I would say it depends. Is that your homepage? Is that a, I mean, is it a general page? It, it really all depends, I guess I would say. Does anybody else want to give an example of something that they have that works well? I have two buttons. I don't have to break the rule, but I basically have an option to schedule a consultation or to send an email. I actually, I actually really like the two options. Um, who, are you, who are you, who in here is familiar with WP Beginner and Opt In Monster? and his name, Syed Balki. I heard a really good podcast and he, uh, a really good strategy that he uses is he never gives one option. He always says, ask somebody do this or do this. Because if they have one option, it's a yes or a no. If they have two options, it's like, okay, I have these still the two options, but instead of yes or no, it's contact us or sign up for the newsletter or whatever it may be. Um, so that's a strategy that I really like to use and it's been very successful for me as well. Um, so again, we're kind of surface level here, but you gotta start with calls to action before you get like really in the weeds with it. Um, website visitor tracking. I just made this very generic here. So uh, who is not using Google Analytics on their website? <coughs> Got a cup? You don't? Not, well, I mean, come on. You use something else, though. Adobe. Yeah, okay. Um, so everybody here then uses Google Analytics except for the really, yeah, <laughs> did you say hipster? <laughs> Such a hipster analytic tool, whatever. <laughs> um, so how, how many of you have the face, Facebook tracking pixel or Facebook analytics on your website? I recommend that on every website. Even if you're not planning to do Facebook ads, at least you can start collecting that data and potentially using it. And Facebook actually has their own analytics suite as well. I mean, Google and Facebook are two really big companies. You might want to, I use Facebook analytics as well just because I don't know what they're going to do or how that's going to evolve, but they're obviously very big. Um, Let's see. Uh, who uses some marketing automation, inbound marketing, CRM on their website? So you track each individual user who signed up for some form on your website, right? And know exactly what pages they've visited, how long they've been on those pages. Anybody else? Got a handful? So, I mean, we're just hitting this high level right now. Um, so also, um, Goals tracking. Does it, who's, who sets up goal tracking in in, analyti- in analytics? Got a couple goal tracking. So I'm just throwing words out there for you right now, right? You can Google all of these things, to figure out how easy way to set them up. And actually, Google Analytics has very f- good free training classes. They want you to be able to use their products. So to this fullest extent, right? So check those out. Um, same with Facebook. They have very good training also. Um, the I'm not gonna say it's not the last thing, but I will just move, everybody knows they need to track it now if they're not tracking. So in-depth product and service details. This is what we're gonna spend pretty much the rest of this session on. So again, how many people sell products? What kind of products do you sell? Uh, giant packaging equipment, like huge conveyor belts and custom machinery. Oh, all right. Did you say you do use some inbound tools and CRMs and track yeah. each individual? I, we have like Google Analytics and that kind of thing. Okay. How much is your average sale? Oh, like an average machine? Mm-hmm. Like maybe a quarter million dollars for a whole line or if it's just like a one-off scale machine, maybe like a hundred thousand. Alright. Like service call for an existing machine, it's like a hundred dollars for like a site visit plus travel. Okay, so 
Yeah, there's yeah, some yeah. things that you can really, really uh, leverage going forward here. Uh, what other products? <laughs> Printing. Printing products? Digital products. Digital products? Okay, so we don't have anybody that's really like online online retail. All right. Some of my clients are grocery stores, but they have another, we partner with another. Okay. Just does the online grocery shop. So you, you? We do like sporting good products from like football sleds to small dummies okay. to track and field equipment. So, so what I'm getting at with that is the other ones are a little different, obviously. Uh, but uh, so, do you write your own product descriptions and your own product pages? Yeah. Good, that's good. That's a big problem. Who is, you know, who has searched for products and you go to five different websites and they're all the exact same title, the exact same description, right? You got to write your own unique content for your products, even if you're like, oh, well, I sell this product and a hundred other people do and you think everybody knows exactly what this is. So make sure your product descriptions are unique to your business. Same thing with services. And I have a feeling I'm gonna see a lot more hands on this or people are just gonna not put their hands up because they don't wanna admit it. So um, how many of you list all of your services on one page? And that's where you list them. Got a couple, all right. Got some hands that don't wanna go up, all right. Uh, it's a trick question. Yeah, you don't know if it's good or bad, right? Uh -huh. Uh, make sure your services all have their own unique page because they're all a unique service and sometimes there are even subsections of that service, right? Um, make sure everything is detailed and in depth and again, we're just talking surface level right now, but we'll get a little more in depth here. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna sidestep just a little bit here. You talked about writing your own copy, um, not as an opinion, but in terms of what kind of uh, results you get back when you're writing your own copy, how valuable is humor? Depends on the product. Depends, I would say depends on the product, the but the audience, but I would say, honestly, not very. Um, but it all depends. Again, it depends on your product or service. Sure. Um, I don't try to use a lot of humor. But maybe I'm just not funny. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, so let's sidestep a little bit. So we talked about uh, before you blog, and that's kind of sorry. I kind of a little misleading on my title. But how many people in here blog for their business? Okay. All right. So, so uh, then my next question. Wait. So let me see the hands again. How many people blog? Uh, quarter of the room or so. Um, so some people who blog for their business, why do you blog? To share information and resources. Information and resources? Become a thought leader. Become a thought leader? Give information on your business. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. to, solve, to solve problems people can fix on their own. Mm, that's interesting. Okay. So do you love blogging? Who loves blogging? for their business. Oh, <laughs> we had one hand that went down when I said for your business. So we got one that stayed up, all right. So we got one person who loves blogging. Um, so who hates blogging? We got a couple that hate blogging and then a bunch of people that are just kind of blah on the fence about it, okay. Um, that's good, that's a good place to be. Um, so I hate the term blog, personally. I 100% hate it. And the reason I hate it is because how did the term blog start? Where did it come from? Web blog, right? which was pretty much what? An online diary for an individual. Well, that's not really what it is anymore, and that's not how we in the industry view it. But every time, and this has been for the past 10 years, every time I meet with a client, because a lot of client, a lot of people who have websites or businesses, they're not savvy right that's why they're hiring me and I try to remove the word blog altogether whenever I talk to them because this is how I view it the the word blog is confusing it has a negative connotation because people are like why does anybody want to know what I ate for breakfast that's what I put on Instagram you know uh, but we know that's not what it is they don't know what to blog about who has that problem Got a couple hands that are kind of uh, 
For your business? Always for your business. That's all we're talking about today. Um, they, think, they think that nobody wants to read their diary. Again, because they don't know what it is. It's, they're confused. They don't think that they're an entertaining writer. Here you go. You asked about... You asked about humor. I don't know. Is humor and entertainment the same thing? Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, they think everything has already been said about their business. Who has that mindset? Wow. Nobody has that mindset. And nobody wants to admit it. I think that's more the case. Uh, I hear that all the time, right? I've got a window washer. Uh, everybody already knows everything there is to know. My competitors have already said everything there is to say about this. Um, well, I'm going to tell you, even if that is true, it doesn't matter. Because you still wash windows. You still have to tell people that you wash windows, right? Um, so... Let's take another, let's kind of take another step back or to the side, however you want to word it. Let's talk a little bit about search engine optimization. Just a little bit. Um, who, who doesn't know what SEO is or search engine optimization? Who knows, but they're not sure they quite know. Okay, we got a handful of those. That's good. Okay. All right, that's fine. Thank you for admitting. That's very strong. Um, so everything that I write for a website revolves around being found in search and inbound marketing. Even though I also offer social media services um, and pay-per-click services, whenever I write any content for a website, the only thing that I personally care about is if it's going to be valuable to find potential customers without me having to pay anything for them other than my time and my expertise. Uh, so that means if I'm writing content, it's not content that I care if it gets shared. I should take that back. It's awesome if it gets shared on social media, but I don't write stuff just so it will get shares. Um, my main goal is to have people find my content whenever they're searching for What? Why do you use the internet? Entertainment. Entertainment? What was the other one? Find information. Find information, find services. Solve a problem. Solve a problem. Buy stuff. To buy stuff? Okay. So I believe there are only two reasons people use the internet. One, to be entertained. Two, to solve a problem. So if you're looking to buy something, it, it may not be a big problem. It may not be a problem that you even think is a problem. But if you want a new shirt, you want a new shirt for whatever reason, right? So to be entertained or to solve a problem. Um, <clears throat> so then we're going to cover the solve a problem. That's what we're really going to talk about with all the content you're going to create for your website. Answer a question. Who is familiar with uh, Marcus Sheridan? They ask, you answer. No, nobody. Good, good. Um, so here's, I got his book right here. I was kind of looking over it this week to brush up. Um, so Marcus Sheridan, I'm just going to give a little background. Essentially, he owned a pool company in 2008, 2009, right when the housing market started to crash. If people can't afford their houses, they're not buying pools, right? So, um, it's kind of funny. The title of his book here actually came out last year. But a revolutionary approach to inbound sales content marketing. And it's very interesting because he even says in his book that whenever he did a presentation, presentation somewhere, somebody, some, a journalist was there, wanted to write an article, and they said it's, his approach is revolutionary. His approach is, they ask a question, you answer the question. <laughs> How revolutionary is that? <laughs> okay. The thing is, though, he identified five areas. So in 2008, 2009, when everybody else in his industry was crumbling in the pool industry, they actually began to soar and succeed because they revamped the entire strategy of their marketing, sales, and everything. They flipped it around and he said, you know what? And this is kind of a, before I even saw this book or heard of Marcus Sheridan, it's kind of my philosophy too, but he's much bigger and he wrote a book, so it's easier to point to him, right? Because I'm not the smartest guy in the room. Um, 
But he's, he decided that he's gonna take a new approach that nobody was doing. And honestly, not very many businesses do it nowadays either. Every single question, he sat down and he wrote down every single question. As a salesperson, he wrote down every single question he had ever gotten from a client or a potential client or customer. Now, how many of you answer the same questions over and over for your potential customers when they call? How many of you have an in-depth piece of content at least about every single one of those questions on your website? Nobody. That's the big point here. So he identified five main things that people are searching for whenever they're searching online. They want to know the cost of whatever product or service, the problems associated with that product or service, comparisons to other products and services, best of, like the best in class, you know, when you're talking cars and all that kind of stuff as well, um, and reviews um, of similar products and services. So how many of you address costs on your website? I see. Specifically, I'm sorry. I'm going to point to you with your big, your big, your big um, dollar items. Yeah, since everything is custom. Oh. The range is so big. Uh huh. It really, really depends on like what they need. Because you're they're you're so unique. You're so special. You're so different. We're so niche. You are. Every little baby thing that we make is different. Yeah. Exactly. And so, how many uh, how many other people don't address that because they believe that they're so different? There's so many options, right? There's so many options. Be honest here. How many people think that that's a reason not to list pricing? Because you have to talk to the potential customer to tell them. Okay. Got a lot of hands there. Um, who's worried about their competitors knowing how much they charge? Got a couple of those. How many who rose their hand about that? How many of you know how much your competitors charge? it's on their site exactly so if you know how much your competitors charge they know how much you charge I guarantee it so it's, a, it's something you shouldn't be afraid of uh, another the last the last thing here is um, that are who's worried that your price will scare off your potential customers see that's a worry right because they're too high because it's so high or because there's so many options so many options yeah okay Ah, see, that's that's, the cost. that's very interesting. It's very interesting. I was going to say, I failed on a lot of sites because they didn't put their price up there and went to somebody mm -hmm. I could find it on. Yeah, a lot of people think, well, it, I want them to call me so I can talk them into this. Because you think you're... I hate calling. Because you think yeah. you're a better salesperson than the content that you could create, maybe, as a reason not to? I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you... None of those are reasons to be afraid because uh, even though you're so unique and you've got so many options, you know why those options cost more or cost less. So then we can get down into the problem, the comparisons. Your competitors aren't doing that, I guarantee it. No matter what industry you're in, this is going to literally be similar across every industry. Um, comparisons, best of, reviews. Don't be afraid to review your products against, with honest, reviews against other products from other competitors or other services from other competitors. Don't be afraid to make friends that are in similar industries and talk about the things that they do well as well also. Because when somebody hits your website, it's all about building trust, right? The faster you can build that trust, the more likely they are to contact you to want to hire you. Also, let's go back to let's go back to um, kind of the, the beginning, right, where we started. We're talking about measuring. So again, you're in an industry where you gotta get, you gotta know exactly what pages people are hitting. Because um, I know from my website that if a potential customer hits this page, this page, and this page before they ever contact me, before they fill out a form, that that close rate on them is about 80% before they ever call me or ever contact me. Um, when you're selling those huge dollar items, if you're providing all of the little details, because when people are spending $100,000, or even if they're contacting somebody else who does a website for $2,000, that's still a fairly large purchase. The more information that they can view before they call you, trust me, it's going to just build that trust. Even if you think your prices are too high, or too low, the more pages that people build on your website, they are, or build, hopefully they're not building websites 
for you. But um, the more pages they view, the more they're going to pre-qualify themselves to be a potential customer for you. So just keep that in mind. Um, now, we're talking about all these things here, but before you ever get to these, make sure you have super in-depth descriptions uh, about your products and your services. You can even talk about how you offer them, how it's different, um, the follow-up process if it's a service, the follow-up process if it's a product. Uh, just You want to get as much information out there as possible. The more information that you give somebody, no matter if it's a $100 product, I'm going to start at $100 too, because from my experience, my research, about $100 is when somebody starts to actually do some serious research, right? If I'm on my phone, I'll just go to Amazon and buy things real quick. But if I'm like, I don't know, I'm looking for this piece of software that ranges between $100 and $200. I don't know, for a lot of people that $100 is kind of a real, makes it a real purchase, right? So if you, especially if you have services that are in that, you want to make sure that you, the people who are buying from you have as much information as possible. Because if you don't have that information, they're gonna go to the next person. How many times, like you mentioned here, how many times have you have left a website because you couldn't find the price really quick? Or you couldn't find a way to contact them? Or you couldn't find a return policy? You know, just think yourself. Put the whole thing back into the mind of the consumer. Think about how you use the internet and how you look for services. And, and then you'll see that what, I, what Marcus Sheridan is saying is true. <clears throat> so <laughs> I acted like I was going to eat her. <laughs> she wasn't sure. She's never scared of anything, though. So. Um, <laughs> So let's, so let's talk about um, uh, creating better content. Better content is going to build trust. The faster you build trust, the more likely somebody is going to hire you or buy your product or pay for your service or your digital download, right? Um, so here are a few tips, because we're getting towards the end here. Um, you already know, everybody raised their hand. They know what, you already know what questions your customers ask you. Um, if you're in a bigger organization, get everybody involved in this process, right? Your sales team has different questions that they're asked. You're, you know, if you have a customer service phone number that people call, those people are the ones who know what questions are always asked. The people who handle email tickets, every single question that you're asked, no matter how ridiculous you may seem or may think it is, can turn into a very valuable piece of content. So uh, don't dismiss any, any question. Even organizing WordCamp Kansas City, I'm always looking for questions that people ask me to ask us, I shouldn't say, just me, because nobody's contacting me directly. But, you know, there, what was the example I used the other day? Um, somebody said, I'm confused where is WordCamp ha happening? It's happening at all these different locations, Kansas City, Brush Creek, <laughs> Town Square. And I was like, you know what? That's not super clear because it says located at Kauffman Foundation Conference Center, but then it's got those listed. And I was like, adding one word there makes it clear. I didn't add room, actually. I said all sessions are located at. But that was very interesting because that was a question I got one time. But guess what? It triggered to answer the question. It was pretty much already answered, but it gave me a little push to modify and improve it. Um, make sure your, any content you're creating on your website is relevant to your business. That's, I'm sure we've all seen that. Um, sadly, a, a local business that I frequent, the owner's father died. Very sad. However, it has nothing to do with my fitness regimen and i'm not talking about my gut okay i'm talking about a real a real gym right it, the death of her father is not a blog that's not a blog post that should be on your business website unless that was somebody who helped inspire you to create the business there was nothing about that in there um unless it, who founded the business an employee of the business this literally had zero to do with the business zero tie-in so while it is sad, it was not relevant to the business. Um, so go in depth. Who's heard of the skyscraper technique? 
other than Tyler. Okay, I got a couple. Um, so I would say look that look that technique up. It's a fantastic technique to use. You can kind of honestly, when you're starting out, you can skip over the backlinking part and just go with the building the content. Um, topic clusters. Other than Tyler, who's heard of topic clusters? <laughs> Sorry. You said to be. I know. I know. <laughs> But I got to have some fun too, right? Okay, so topic clusters uh, is a technique created by HubSpot. Um, actually, if you go to the my session page on the WordCamp website, these slides are there, and these are all clickable links as well. Um, if you attended uh, Alyssa Murphy's session, you've already heard about Answer the Public. That's one of my favorite little websites. It's a little. I like the way it's interactive as well. FAQ Fox, you can enter a topic and a list of your competitors' websites and see all the questions that they are answering on their websites. How cool is that? Um, and then two other really simple ways. So all these are simple ways. Obviously, there are much more in-depth ways. Um, simply just using the autocomplete on Google search or YouTube even. Um, you start typing in your topic into Google search, right? It'll start autocompleting it, show you what other people are actually looking for. And then also at the bottom, you have that little section that says searches related to. So there, there I have an acquaintance who is not in SEO at all and who does very well with his content in search. And I was like, hey, I see you do very well. Your statistics show you do very well. What do you do? And he's like, all I do is type in a topic and then scroll to the bottom and do searches related to and create content around that. I was like, that is super simple and brilliant. It's not something that I haven't used myself, but this is like a guy who was just like, I know I need to create content. I don't know how. This is the only method he's used, and he's very successful with his business and being found in search. So um, creating valuable content for your website is not difficult. I highly recommend to everybody to check out They Ask, You Answer. It's 220 pages, easy read, like $15 on Amazon. And I linked to it in a tweet. And it, I did, or you did. Angie just linked to it in a tweet. So if you can't find it, check out the WCKC hashtag. Um, of course, if everybody starts looking it up, then the price is going to go up on Amazon. But uh, get there first, right? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but anyway, I highly recommend the book. Uh, like I said, easy read, lots of great advice, and lots of great guidance just for you to get your head wrapped around the entire process. Um, so. That's what I have for you today. Um, so adopt a puppy. Today is uh, Adopt-a-thon at uh, Wayside Waves. So uh, you can go get adopt any animal for $35. It's a dang good deal. Um, so we kind of ran right up against it. That's why I always ask for participation during the presentation as well. Um, who didn't learn a single thing? Uh, who's just being nice? Oh, all right. Well, thank you all very much. I'll be in the com community support lounge uh, as soon as I go get a glass of water and use a restroom. So if you want to talk more about this, come visit me over there. Hit me up at Travis Flayens on Twitter. Also, I tweeted a link to my slides there, too. So thank you all. Enjoy the rest of WordCamp. Come to the parties tonight.